Well, I started to do a video on the two remove options in Photoshop. There's the remove tool, the little brush, and then there's the little button in the contextual taskbar. And I thought, I thought I could go through a bunch of photos and come up with a definitive answer on what the best way to work was. Um, I was wrong, um, but I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna run the video because I thought the content of, I essentially went through 15 to 20 photos and the content of what I'm doing, I think is still valuable. I think there are nuances to each tool. Um, I think there are certain times where one may work better than the other. There's certain times where the other one may work and there's certain times where they can both work and there's certain times where neither one is gonna work. Um, but I think if you can watch through this, I'm not gonna show you all 20 examples that I worked through, but I'll show you some different examples. You'll get a better feel for what I noticed that made one tool easier for a certain photo, maybe another tool easier for a certain photo. So I thought the content was still valuable, which is why I ran with it. So let's jump in and you can take a look for yourself. Uh, I think the first thing would be just very, very quickly demonstrate what I did. And that way you can get an idea for, for your different options. But we, we have the remove tool over here in uh, all of our healing brush tools inside the toolbox, okay? And with that remove tool up at the top there, we have a mode and we have auto, which may or may not use generative AI. And then we have uh, gen AI on and gen AI off. So essentially all I did is I, I tried gen AI on, I tried gen AI off. The advantage of the remove tool, I think, would be it's it's pretty simple. You know, you just brush, and the nice part about it is is I generally found this a little bit faster. Okay, when I had an object to select, because when you brush, you notice it closed it closed the loop for me. I'll undo that really quick, and I'll brush over it again. But it went in there and it closed everything up for me. So all I had to do was essentially just brush the outline, and the remove tool filled it up. Now at that point you try to figure out well what's what gen you know what what direction do you want to go to remove it what mode do you want to use do you just want to use auto and let photoshop pick what it thinks is best or gen ai on gen ai off most of the time i just use auto i let photoshop pick what's best but in order to demonstrate what's better or worse i tried one with each of them okay so what that came up with was the generative ai off is going to produce usually a a more a higher resolution uh fill area if you will so when i look at this and even as i start to pixel peep it it's hard to do in video so there's no reason for me to just zoom in on it it'll it'll get grainy no matter what but if you take my word for it every time i use generative ai off the fill was was definitely higher quality i didn't notice it as much however the results are almost always worse so you can see it just it doesn't fill that in the way that I want. Now, if I kept trying it over and over again, I might get there, but it it generally, it didn't always fill the area that I wanted um, with exactly what I wanted. Now I put generative AI on as another example, and that always worked, okay? The difference is it's just slightly lower quality. If you were to zoom in on the grass back here, you were to zoom in on the grass back here, it looks blurry back here. Will anybody ever notice it? Probably not. You know, do we're working with smaller parts of our photo. I would never recommend this for a big part of the photo. And then this was just essentially, I'll, I'll turn it all off and I'll show you what the other option was besides the remove tool. You can go in and you can make a selection. And usually we make that selection with the lasso tool. So you just lasso around whatever you want, like so. So this was more time consuming. And again, it might not seem like a lot. I, I did probably almost 20 images consecutively. And so I just found as I was doing it and I had to do it a lot, if you fall into that case, I found it becoming tedious to constantly have to go in and make a selection. There's other selection tools, you know, so we can always try the, uh, something like the object selection tool and see how that one works as well. And so that would probably put uh, a quicker selection around there. But I just generally did find that going in here and always having to make a selection around. And then essentially, even when you use another selection tool to fix that selection, just felt a little tedious at times. But that does open up the uh, little contextual taskbar up here. It opens up the remove tool. You click on that, goes in there and it'll go and, and remove it for me. And I always found it did pretty much what the AI part of the remove tool brush did. That's what I, I could, I could, I couldn't really notice too much of a difference between them. 
Okay, so that's a, a quick run through of the ways. Now let's just go through some different images. Really quick, I wanted to jump into the video to announce that I have once again teamed up with Dave Cross for the Lightroom Virtual Summit 2025. So if you're watching this before late September 2025, you're gonna wanna take advantage of this one. I know this is a Photoshop video, but a lot of you use Lightroom as well. The idea behind it is it's totally free. So it's a five day virtual event. And each day the classes air, and as part of the free pass, you get to watch those classes for 48 hours after they air, okay? Now, once that time is up, you also have the option of purchasing the VIP pass, and that gets you lifetime access, so you can watch the classes whenever you want, but it also gets you class notes, as well as all the bonuses and things that the instructors uh, prepare specifically for the VIP pass. So this is shaping up to be one of the biggest ones that we've had. I, I, I looked at the class list, I helped create the class list, but uh, the instructors submit the classes, and I've been working with Lightroom since it first came out. And there's classes in there that I'm thinking, I wanna go watch. So uh, I really, as we've put together 15 of the best instructors in the world, uh, over 45 classes. So I do hope that you'll join us, whether it's gonna be for the free pass or the VIP pass, make sure you check out the link for a little bit more info. Um, if you knew, you if you knew you wanted to be, maybe just create a background of sorts, you could hit select subject, and that would very, very quickly select the subject in the photo, rather than you go through with a brush or a selection tool and do it and then hit remove. Um, I did find in that circumstance, if that was the case, I could go in there and remove something really, really quick. Now it did leave a couple of little splotches. It's never gonna be perfect, but you can, you can use any distraction removal tool to clean these up in just a few seconds afterward. The whole point is, is that um, I found it definitely faster if whatever I was trying to remove was the subject of the photo because then I could just click select subject, remove back or remove and it was done. Uh, we got another example here and this, I noticed this across the board because I do a lot of distraction removal with my bird photography. And this was something that I did notice between the tools. So making the selection uh, over here definitely was, was, I found a little bit easier with the remove tool, but take a look at the edit. So. This was me making a selection with the lasso tool and using the remove option. And I found it fairly seamless. Again, the texture, it's not quite perfect there, but I found it fairly seamless and to the point that when I show this photo off at the distance, I would show it off even on a print, you'd never see it. But I thought it was pretty good. Then when I used the remove tool, almost every branch that I tried this on, I did notice a, a, almost a line, a little bit of a splotch going on there. And that was with the AI option on and the AI option off. I noticed a little bit, I could just see the line where when I used the remove tool uh, or when I used the selection with the remove button, I didn't notice that as much. Again, I, I can't say, at the distance where you'd need this at, I can't say either one of these would not necessarily work for me, although I still do see a little bit of a line. I would challenge that most people when I shared this off, when I shared this off online would never see it, but uh, that's something that I did notice if you're getting a little nitty gritty there. Uh, and I tried one here on the lake, and I tried one here on the lake, and so again, results were pretty much what I expected. Uh, it was always easier to select this rock with the remove tool brush because it was very simple to just uh, to just take the brush and essentially just you know paint it and be done. So it only took a few seconds. Um, so it was always easier to do it that way. And then AI on versus AI off. AI on always gave me a better fill of the area than AI off did. The AI off does fill it. The texture I found always looked a little bit better, but the actual fill and the way the fill looked in that area to me always looked a little bit better. And the same goes for just using uh, a selection tool of that area and then just hitting that remove button. Again, it just, it was always a better fill than using AI off uh, when it comes to that remove brush. So I, I think I could I could keep running through examples and it would it would really become the same thing over and over again. Um, if I could leave you with anything, it's that they all work well. I think you saw some of the nuances of you know using what I found of doing this over 20 images. If that's not you, if you're not doing it over and over again, then you might not even notice those things uh, if you're only using this once or twice a day. But I think you've got the information, they all work well. What I would say is they all use different technology. So they could work 
differently on different photos. So you know you, you know which tools to use. Now it's up to you to, to just know, have the knowledge that, hey, if I don't like the results of the way this method's going, maybe I go back and I try another method to remove something from the photo. And I think that's really uh, probably the more powerful uh, takeaway from the video here. Um, in other news, if you're interested in Lightroom, which I did mention the Lightroom Summit a little bit earlier, uh, if you're interested in Lightroom, I've got a video here that did really well. Uh, it's basically five things that everybody should know inside of Lightroom. And from what most people told me, uh, there was definitely something new in there for them. So if you're looking for another video to check out, that's a great one to go visit.